I'm Derek Sterling and multiple business owner. And one of the businesses I have is KC Polylift. Tell me about the the different businesses that, that you own and if you want to highlight one in particular. Yeah. So it started off in a landscape business, um, commercial landscaping about 23 years ago. And then probably for the last 15 years, start up a power equipment company so we can uh, service other equipment, uh, sell back equipment to our landscape company. So we sell over the years, different things like go-karts to mowers, to um, hand tools and things like that. So currently we're at that business. We sell all electric commercial lawn mowers. Um, and so we're changing out our landscaping fleet um, here in, in city metro area, all to electric um, commercial mowers that are you know, 24 kilowatt motors. Tell me a little bit more about that, that business and what type of service you provide. Yeah. So we started the poly business over the years. I've looked for different opportunities to help our commercial customers and businesses. I've started up HVAC businesses, things like that, but <clears throat> I've been looking for one that's a little higher margins on hourly wages and pay that we get paid, et cetera. And so we were on some properties doing some, uh, fixing uh, erosion issues. Um, they come in typically on a commercial property. They could come in on an apartment complex, for example, and they're going to get inspected. And if they have trip hazards uh, over three-eighths or half an inch, um, they got to replace the concrete. And I thought, well, there's got to be a better way to do this. Surely people are doing something else that could be cost-effective. So I did some research and poly lifting concrete, um, fixing trip hazards, things were something that people did in the area they just mostly focused on residential um commercially uh, a lot of times the price can be so cheap to replace the concrete that they figured well that they're just going to replace it so i had some concrete lifting that needed to be done at my house I had some companies come out one of the companies that came out uh was a friend of a friend and he was sort of transitioning more into retirement he wasn't uh really wanting to expand his business <clears throat> and so I ended up just buying him out and then he came to work for me as a, a sales consultant. Kind of give me a little bit of the the history of a business, of your businesses as a business owner and like kind of how it's evolved o over time now um, that we're in 2024. Yeah. So, I mean, I started at 14 years old, push mowing yards and had a paper route um, that I worked with somebody and then at 16 was driving a paper route. And so, um, worked for a big company, ran their crews. They said, let's start a company and subcontract to you. So I did that for a while. Um, <clears throat> and then over the years, just, uh, trying to, you know, we hire a lot of friends and family. Um, and so guys end up being with us a long time. So we're pushing it into 15 years. Some of the guys have been with me and trying to expand one business sometimes isn't where we're capable of doing to the level that we want to. So even though I own a national franchise, markets can still control your growth or just your personality or, or my general manager, even uh, where we're at with families and different things. We just weren't grow, 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 grow. And even in certain industries like the landscape industry, you're, you're limited to <clears throat> what you can pay people hourly. Um, it's a lower paid industry. So I've got guys with me, great, great people. Um, so I tried different things and, um, about two years ago, I got into the poly lifting business and the margins are much higher. I'm able to give good substantial raises, um, to my employees that like to work for me. They've learned as we've gone along. And so now we are, you know, pushing out our second poly rig, which is a pretty big deal to do in the first two years in a market that's got lots of competition. Uh, we've done so well that we actually are doing poly lifting for foundation companies. So in the past, most of the companies that do poly lift are tied out with foundation companies that are lifting up foundations. Um, and then they come in and they want to foam up the floors or lift up garage floors or driveways, sidewalks. And so we do such a good job. They've We've got two companies that are selling their rigs and they're done with trying to figure it out, keep the rig going. Um, and like our quality and our price. So, and now we've got some commercials out there and, and I think we're, I think we're probably the premier poly lift business here in Kansas city just in two years, but I've been in business for 20 something years. So we know 
how to work with people. And we've got over a thousand jobs that we've done, um, which is a lot, I think, in the poly world. So we do things that other companies, you know, don't have the skill to do um, or want to take on even when it comes to lifting up concrete and things versus replacing it. So so as a potential customer who may be interested in um, your polylift business, but just isn't really familiar with the product, how would you explain the benefit uh, of using that to maybe level out s- some concrete or issues that were I'm experiencing at home and, and why I would go with that versus, um, you know, another product? Yeah. So it's a great question. So one of the things that polyurethane technology does is when we come into, let's say your garage floor and you have unlevelness and it's sinking in the middle. Cause a lot of times when they compact um, and build out houses, that's kind of the last thing in our market that they, they pour. And so they will be settling and then the weight of the cars might start to settle. Um, and sometimes you can't get heavy equipment in there to compact that dirt. So we do a lot of work in garage floors. Um, you're looking at 15 to $18 a square foot to have that replaced. A lot of times we're coming in, we're lifting it back up, we're stabilizing it um, with polyurethane. We're drilling five eighths inch holes, and about every three to four feet. And that polyurethane that is is a lifetime stability. Now that doesn't mean the ground underneath can't sink more. Um, but when we add in, let's say three hundred pounds of foam underneath your concrete floor, the old school way of doing things was mud jacking. If you want, if you didn't want to replace it, you drill out an inch hole or have you inch and a half and you start pumping mud. Well, mud, you're going to pump in on that equivalence is going to be about 50 times as much weight. So if you had a compaction issue, you're adding more weight to the problem and eventually mud is going to smash down again. So our poly foam, it only shrink 1% of its lifetime properly installed, proper foam. We use the best foam that you can use. We use foam that's uh, been tested by MoDOT and, and KDOT, the, you know, DOT, et cetera. And so, um, and the nice thing for us is we can back right up to your, right up to your door. Um, we're pretty quiet, um, when it comes to our rig because of the, uh, we use all electric, uh, rig out, outside of the van itself. It's an all electric system. So we're able to run our own power, um, and keep that, that machine, uh, running as quiet as possible without um, extra, extra headache noise. If you have babies sleeping in the house or or what have you. So, um, and then, you know, we like to, we can seal up the, the cracks. Um, if that's, you know, outside the, we do a lot of driveways going into garages or if you're going to go in to replace that, um, it's going to be, you know, thousands more than what, what we charge to, to lift it back up. How does sustainability or eco-friendly factor into your business operations? Yeah, so from the landscape company to the polylift business and actually to my own home, we have a, a large solar system at my my property. But uh, one of the things that um, is nice about the battery is where, you know, from a, from a lawnmower perspective, the way that the uh, manufacturers see the sustainability is if you take one commercial lawnmower off the market, um, it's equivalent to taking eight gasoline driven vehicles off the market. And so um, the uh, sustainability there is to try to reduce the emissions um, from a landscaping perspective. Um, I've been out in the field for a lot of the years that I've, I've done um, work. And um, whenever you're running pruners or handheld equipment that you have fumes right there in your face, um, it gets to be so overwhelming. You can get headaches and my eyes start to water. Um, you feel sick maybe afterwards if you're just running things like this right in your face. And so the battery side of it really keeps the environment even just presently within your employees um, a lot more sustainable, not to mention the uh, noise, I believe, is a big factor of uh, sustainable because our ears, I can't hardly hear out of one of my ears just because of all the years of loud lawnmowers um, running um, and so, um, the, the quietness is it really, I think it reduces mental illness. I think it reduces, uh, stress, um, just the constant noise. And, um, it also helps our guys to be compliant with, with OSHA, um, because we don't have to have actual earplugs for a certain amount of hours of running electric, uh, mower. So, um, 
And then, you know, on the polyvith side, just the, the idea that we're running a battery, um, without a big generator, it takes a, I think we had an 18 kilowatt generator in the uh, van before we had the, uh, battery system. And it was very, very fumy, lots of fuel, um, you know, 10 gallons of fuel a day or what have you to run that machine, um, for the hours that we ran it. So, uh, we're also looking at, you know, being less, less fossil fuel and more sustainable. Um, I believe the batteries will warranty for 10 years. Um, so that's 10 years worth of, uh, you know, running a generator and probably replacing it two or three times within that 10 year period. Can you describe, uh, your experience with, with running a generator and any of other complications you had, or maybe how it limited your business? Yeah. So, um, we're in the concrete lifting business, but most of the rigs out there that are built similar to our rigs, the equipment that we have, you can do two things with it. You can do uh, spray foam insulation, or you can do concrete lifting. Our rig is designed, we can do spray foam insulation. Now we choose not to go down that road. It's just a different product that goes and runs through the machine. So our previous machine that we own was a trailer that had a large diesel generator in it um, that was liquid cooled, of course. And so we would be parking on, on uh, streets and it was loud. It was like the, you know, trash truck showing up to your house in the mornings, you know, but it stayed there the entire time we were on your project. In order for us to have power, we had to have that generator running. Um, and so we would have to park further enough away that we can converse with one another as employees. When a customer, they like to watch what we do um, because it seems like magic, like it, you're pushing something underneath and things are moving up and they can't believe it. You know, and so they kind of like to watch um, and we like the customer interaction to kind of show accountability and and we get a lot of uh, positive feedback from that. So our guys are not are not bashful. Um, and so with with uh, the rig being out there so loud like that, we would um, <clears throat> obviously, you know, it, you'd have to have earplugs. I mean, you'd have to have earmuffs on. And so when you do your repairs, you pull your hose back, you're working on your gun inside this rig, huge generator noise. It's just, it's a stressful environment to work around that kind of noise because we need, we don't want earplugs on when we're doing our job because we have to listen to cracking and and communication. If somebody says, hey, whoa, we're lifting over here. And we, we need to be able to really see what we're doing. Um, and so, uh, and hear what we're doing. Um, but so running that large generator is expensive. Also what it does, it's hard on the equipment because of a gas powered, even diesel generator has power surges. So as you start turning on one heater, a different heater, an air compressor, and you you go, Ooh, you know, things will surge. Um, and so that's hard on some of the Graco products that we run because uh, they have a lot of circuit boards within their, their system. Um, and so, I hear in the industry, especially in the spray foam insulation industry, where they're running these big generators, that one of their biggest challenges for manufacturers is not the equipment itself, it's actually the generators. Because they're expensive to work on. Um, nowadays, you're running the blue def in anything that's newer, have a certain size, and so there's more things that can go wrong. Um, and so um, back to my rigs, where I have it in a van, a smaller type system because we're only going to run through a set. We call it a set. It's about 1,900 pounds of foam a day at the most. Spray foam insulation companies might run through two sets. So our van wouldn't be large enough or, you know, heavy duty enough to really put two sets in. But with our van, um, we had a generator and obviously it's a, it's a air cool generator. You can put these liquid cool generators in vans, but now you're going to have to get into a dually it causes DOT regulations, different things when we cross state lines because now you're federally regulated, et cetera. So we really wanted to keep under the 10,000 GVW because we work across state lines a lot in our market. And so um, with that, you know, we had a generator we had to pull out and then we had to lock in a place. And if it rained, we had to set up a tarnel because we didn't it exposed our entire van to the rain. And we don't like to stop just because of a little bit of rain. Plus, we didn't want rain going on our generator and so we'd have to create this huge thing pull it out turn it on when we get to the job turn it off as fast as we possibly could and then if we're like oh we still need to do this we do that we got to fire it back up 
what's beautiful about the battery system is it's just on the doors can be closed there's no it's on the whole time um and of course we you know touched on the quietness but now you can work on your gun and it's quiet um etc and so um and then we burnt our door right because it's got a 2000 temperature exhaust that's coming out so our door flew the wind blew it melted our door um i'm always concerned about anything with gas you got exhaust that if we had one napkin or a piece of cardboard that fell down on that thing, you know, we only ran in about four months before we got our battery system installed on it. Um, but, uh, you know, a fire is just inevitable. Um, a lot of rigs go up in flames because of the exhaust and the heat, et cetera. Um, and of course, in the summertime, that heat is going inside your van. So now your van is just super hot because you've got this generator and even if you doghouse it, so on a trailer application, they usually stick the generator off in a separate room uh, to try to control the noise and, and control the heat, et cetera. How did you first learn uh, about electric systems? How did you learn about, about Jewel Case and, and what uh, they provide? Yeah, so f I was first looking into, uh, you know, 2020, our, our fuel bill for our landscape company was uh, $80,000 and fuel was right, right around, I believe, $2 a gallon. In our market, it jumped up in 2022 we were seeing things around four dollars a gallon so it was easy math to me to think well my fuel bill was 80 grand so it's going to jump up to 160 grand so i was trying to think forward what can i do to control that expense i can't necessarily go to all my contracts that are already in place and recapture that much um money along with you know i wanted to see where the electric stuff was at in the world of landscaping so i was actually shocked i had to drive around i went to three states away to go demo a mower in february um long story short i brought in Beam green as a company that's been around for 13 years making all electric battery powered equipment and so i just kind of set on a mission that i'm going to start changing out our fleet um and go to battery because of the fuel differences and so at that time we were looking at a savings per day per machine. Um, it would take about $3 a day to charge that mower. And it, if we were to run that equivalence in a gas powered machine, it would take about uh, $54 in fuel. Um, so in today's world, fuel's gone down some. So I figured about every day that we run an electric machine versus the gas machine, we're going to save $25 to $35 on fuel, not to mention the maintenance of belts, um, air filters, fuel filters, adjusting valves, the maintenance you have to do to an engine, not to mention in our world, we run mostly air-cooled engines, and so they're only going to run 15 to 1,800 hours. So now, within a three-year period, while the mower is under warranty, a lot of times we're replacing engines either before warranty's out or after warranty's out, um, and so there's another expense of three grand. Um, so... Then I build up the poly rig, and my first thought is we've got to go electric. Um, we just got to, you know, stick with with this. It's expensive to try to start up from. I've kind of been a guinea pig in this world. Um, I'm probably the only company in the Midwest that's running five all electric uh, landscape mowing crews that run all day. Um, it's an investment, but uh, I think overall it's going to save money and it's going to help us be a better place to work and and and. Uh, we're able to track uh, some of the technologies there. We can track our equipment out in the field with some of the equipment that we run. And so on the on the poly rip lifting side, I just saw that, uh, you know, we wanted to, you know, look at, you know, 10 to 15 gallons a day, depending on how long that rig is ran or how much foam we put, put in. So we're looking at, you know, the savings of, you know, 25 to $30 day, dollars a day on a gas engine that's running in our rig that was running in our rig. and so once we figured the the math out on that it was also going to be about two thousand to three thousand dollars a year to run that in fuel um and so when we look at the difference in going battery at about a thirty thousand dollar versus a six thousand um, dollar generator that's going to only last for about two years uh, we're basically going to replace that generator probably every two to three years so we're ba we're basically going to be around a two to three year return on our money, just in fuel 
and a one or two replacements of a generator. Um, and the nice thing about Jewel Case is batteries are they're warranty for 10 years. So we have a great system um, for that. What were the key reasons or uh, factors that made you choose Jewel Case as your, your battery system to, to power Casey Polylift? Okay. So I started this journey uh, looking for something to power our poly rig. It's been 18 months ago. So it, it took a while. Uh, we've been running Joel Case's system for about six months. So I spent a year in between, you know, doing lots of things, calling battery companies, calling EV battery companies. We have companies out here in Kansas City even that build out and change out vehicles to EV vehicles. We've checked out with battery power malls. We tried to get a hold of Tesla and multiple different places. So it, each time that I was getting a hold of somebody, it seemed like there was a separation between batteries and inverters. And if you know anything about the two, it's like you really have to have both. So one company might say, well, we'll sell you the batteries, but we don't deal with the inverters or we'll get you the inverters, but we can't guarantee you that those inverters are going to work on those batteries or we can do this or do that, but we don't really know. And and so it just kept going back and forth, almost to the point of, of frustration. Like I can't, I have to run this generator for the next, you know, two or three years until people get systems built that are ready for this. People, I have people telling me, well, this can't be done. And it's like, how? They're doing batteries in other countries for, for decades. I mean, I've been in third world countries where they're running their whole house on car batteries. So there's a way to invert, you know, in different things. And people are doing it in homes. Hospitals have battery power walls. Like this, this isn't something new. I'm just trying to do it on a mobile um, direction. And so... Um, the company that built out my rig, my first, uh, not, not my first rig, but my second rig that was all in a van, they were super interested in saying, Hey, we want to do this. We're going to partner with you because we want to hit California. We want to really show that we can get these rigs out to markets that they're going to sell. Uh, but they had nowhere to start. I even talked to Greenworks. This was on the manufacturers, you know, that I buy equipment from, from mowers, and so you have a, a 45 volt, you have 82 volt, you have all these different variables and batteries that are out there because Greenworks runs 82 volt um, to get up, to get things transferred into a 220, 240 system um, from a volt standpoint. Um, it sounded like it was just too daunting and then nobody could guarantee me it's going to work. So I could go out and spend anywhere from 20 to get some used EV, refurbished EV vehicle batteries to it sounded like about 60 grand to get something going, but I wasn't told it was going to work. So um, I just kept researching. Um, and basically uh, the company that was selling me my uh, second van was like, Derek, just give it up. Get yourself the diesel generator. You know, they've been running them on food trucks forever. Nobody complains at a food truck place to get their food because they hear a generator. I'm like, Okay, but you don't run the rig. I run the rig. I'm an owner operator at this point until I build up enough guys and I understand the system's big enough that I pass it on. And so, like, I've been running equipment my whole life and I don't want the noise. I don't want the fumes. I don't want the fire hazard. I don't want, you know. And so he goes, What? And so he brought the word food trucks. So I just like 2 30 in the morning woke up and I thought, I'm going to look up battery food trucks. So I found battery food trucks and that's how I saw, I ran into Jewel Case and the experience was within two weeks. It was like, hey, we're a good fit. Um, Jewel Case was confident our system will work. There may be some tweaks. We may have to add an inverter. Um, yes, it's a little bit new, but we have done another uh, spray foam rig in the past. And so I felt very good about the process. Um, we got our first system. They were super helpful on you know, we had some we had some challenges. A cable came that wasn't uh, hooking up correctly. Um, it was uh, so we we tried multiple things, but I was on the phone with one of the jewel cases uh, reps there until after eight o'clock, and we got it done that night to get that rig up and ready. Because once we took our battery out, we had to our I mean, our generator out. We had to be going because we had work waiting for us to do. So they're very helpful and and easy to work with. Um, and they, they guaranteed their system to work. Um, and so we're we're running a 100 amp service in a van um, that's just a uh, 
transit van, extra long single axle van. And the weight capacity of the batteries versus the generator was like right at the same weight with a full tank of gas. So we really didn't add any weight. Um, we're running nine, four, um, uh, we're running nine kilowatt batteries, four of them. So we have 36 kilowatts worth of battery power in our van and we've ran it for 10 hours a day and we've pumped as much as 650 pounds out and still had 30% battery left at the end of the day. How do you measure the success of uh, the electric or jewel case products um, in achieving your, your goals? Are there any particular me metrics or, or outcomes that you, you've tracked or are tracking? So moving into the battery system, um, we're able to save anywhere from 25 to $35 a day in fuel. Um, we do not have to change the oil every two weeks on the generator. We don't have to pull the air filter out and blow it off. Uh, we don't have to uh, double check the exhaust um, to make sure that it's staying tight. Um, there's a lot of maintenance to putting a gas powered generator inside a van that has um, some things that are, you know, uh, flammable, like brake cleaner, um, things like that, that, uh, even just having, you know, a spark inside the van, um, could be potentially dangerous. And so we're really, uh, over the course of the next several years, I think we're going to really see the savings come back. Um, currently I think there's nine years left on the federal tax, uh, credit for battery power loss is 30%. Um, so if you look at the, the costing of, a thirty thousand dollar system and thirty percent, we're down to twenty one grand. And so, um, there's some installation installation costs involved with that. But if you're buying an equivalent uh, generator at six to seven thousand um, with the maintenance and the fuel fuel on a yearly basis, uh, I think you're um, going to pay for it basically in three years and have three times the warranty left that you're going to get with any combustible engine um and so i feel like it's a lot less uh hard um when we first got our battery our our gas powered rig um who had a a uh, 18 kilowatt generator in it and within the first 30 minutes of us running it it we we assume talking to the manufacturer because of the power surges it blew the circuit board in our twenty two thousand dollar machine and so the nice thing about this battery with the inverter system that dual case sells is that it's very clean in the context that there's not power surges. You hear a little humming, but there's no vroom, vroom. It's not power surging and that's the worst thing for circuit boards. And so my second rig that we're running dual case battery system, that that system is a $54,000. So it's a state of the art, smart machine, a lot more expensive after, you know, it's out of warranty it's going to be very expensive to fix that machine. And so I believe the jewel case is going to jewel case is going to save us a lot of repairs, just fixing things that I believe power surges are causing problems to. And that um, I think is going to make it more sustainable to where we could get 10 years out of our um, great go machines and our compressors, everything that's running off this battery um, system. Lastly, just just kind of tell me a little bit about the the customer feedback that you guys get from doing such a uh, providing such a cool service. Yeah, so one of the first things that they say is just the professionalism of our guys. So our guys have been with us as a company for a, over a decade, um, and so they like to help. They like to serve the customer. Uh, when the customer sees the polyurethane, if they not had things mud jacked or or polyed in the past um, for other projects. Um, they're just kind of in shock of what what things could look like. Um, they kind of get used to driving over those large um, thresholds into the garages or used to the water sitting in the middle of the garage or tripping over trip hazards on the sidewalk or what have you. And so they're they're just uh, a lot of them are super, super excited for the money that they spent and the, the work that was performed and, you know, got things back to not new concrete, but it got back things back to where it's it, it could last you know, as long as that concrete lasts in many cases. And so I think the savings, you know, concrete work isn't, isn't a vacation. It's not a nice car. It's not a nice home. It's something like fixing your car. You know, people are most of the time just super excited about 
getting their uh, you know concrete fixed, but it does, they are excited about saving money. Uh, we're out pools. We do a lot of pool decks uh, where we can just lift these pads back up to you know whether it's commercial properties where they have trip houses, et cetera, around uh, HOAs and municipal swimming pools. So we lift things back up way less expensive than pulling off diving boards and replacing all that concrete around those pools, et cetera. And so uh, we find that uh, they're happy to to spend the money for, you know, something they got to fix. So 